Welcome to Real Talk with Sean, everybody. This evening, I have the pleasure of speaking with Miss Latria, who is a disabled empowerment coach. And thank you so much for joining me, Latria. I appreciate oh, you. Oh, so good. Welcome. Before I even ask my first question, I want to let you know that I think you're a very strong woman for standing up and speaking out and, you know, and, and actually empowering disabled individuals to live what do you say? How do you say it? Live above their disability? Yeah, live above the limits of society. There you go. Exactly. And I love that motto. I love the statement. And so I'm very, very proud of what you're doing and honored, of course, to have you join me. Oh, well, thank you so much. It is such a, uh, it is such a pleasure. You know, I'm going to say something real quick. You know, it's funny how um, sometimes in this, in this field, <clears throat> you're not really sure if you're doing it right, mm -hmm. or you're not really sure if you're reaching people, if you're not really sure if your message is reaching people, right. or anybody listening. And then you have moments like this where God reminds you that yes, you are reaching people, that yes, people do hear what you're saying, and yes, you are on the right track. So I just want to say thank you for that. Absolutely. And I do agree with you. Um, you know, we can do our best and never give up. But it always helps when, you know, we acknowledge, because I tell you what, people will acknowledge the wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I definitely um, agree with you on that. And um, I definitely want to let you know, for me, just one little person, but I matter to keep going. Well, thank you. Yeah, well, you're you. welcome. You're welcome. Were you born disabled? I was born disabled. Um, I was born with a rare genetic syndrome called... Um, Pfeiffer syndrome is spelled P-F-I-F-F-E-R. And what Pfeiffer syndrome is, is um, it's a syndrome, it's a genetic syndrome where I think it's something with the chromosomes. Okay. Um, I think you have one less chromosome or something, something of that nature. I'm not a science buff, so don't get me. <laughs> don't, don't, don't even ask me all that, okay? But at any rate, um, what happens is when you're born and when your bones are created, when your bones are being created, they're supposed to fuse together in a certain way to support your body. Right. Now, for me, the bones in my skull did not fuse properly. So when I was born, I had two main issues. I had um, areas in my skull where there was no bone. Because the bone had used properly in that particular area. And then on top of that, we also have um, stems that protect our, that prevent our um, skull from sitting on top of our brain. Mm -hmm. So your brain right here. And then you have little stems all around your brain right. that prevents your skull from sitting on top of it. Mm -hmm. So when I was born, my skull was practically sitting on top of my brain. Wow. Okay. I had no stem to hold skull up off the brain. Um, I was born, when I was born, I had my first surgery at two months old. Um, I've had uh, 35 to 45 different operations. Like I said, I had the first one at two months. Um, I had a life expectancy. Well, I, had, I was given two different life expectancies. The first one I was given, I was I was given a life expectancy of nine. Surpassed that one, as you can tell. Um, <laughs> you look damn good, and you, know, <laughs> and you speak oh, very well for nine. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I was given the life expectancy of thirty-five. Okay. I will be forty-four come February, so. God, ain't nothing you can tell me. I'm sorry. I know that. Sorry. Ain't nothing you can say or do or say or tell me. I'm sorry. You just, you just can't. You're right. You know? You're right. And I tell people all the time, I'm like, you know what? I know the devil's sick of me. I know he's sick of me. <laughs> okay. I know he is sick of me because everything he has tried to throw at me, 
I just get back up. And he keeps saying, why he keep getting back up? Like, I've had drug addicted parents. I've been in the foster care system. I've been abused. I have a disability. I had all of these different things going on at the same time. I've been homeless as a kid. I just had so much going on at one time. It was like blow after blow after blow after blow after blow after blow. And I would go to God. I'm like, God, really? I mean, really? This 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 what you this what we're doing? I mean, this this, this what else you got? What 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 got you got anything else up there that I didn't know about that I didn't prepare for? Exactly. But it, it just but I remember him always telling me, hold on. I got you. And that's all I had. I know that's right. All I had was the word of God. I know that's right. I got you. And the thing is, is that, you know, it's it's truthful. I mean, that's, there's nothing else in your case for you to believe, but that there's a God, you know, because like you said, you overcame all of that and the body itself can withstand physical pain. We can go through pain. You know, you can go to the hospital for that and deal with that. But all of the things that you've been through could have taken this. Yes. And so I, I will tell you that you are a walking, talking poster board of strength to have gone through all of that. that that's serious. You know, um, I believe giving pats on the back when, they, when they're due, you know, so because I mean, people break for stuff like that. Foster care, yes. you know, you yes. said you've been abused. Yeah. Um, you know, you're disabled. So, I mean, those things alone could have mentally taken you out yeah. and then having to deal with society on top of those things in yeah. your head. So, yeah, I'm here. That's and I'm not living, I'm thriving. I know that's right. I'm thriving. I'm whole. I'm healthy. I'm thriving. So, that's why I say, I don't know what's me. I know he's just sitting somewhere just sick of me. I know. I know he is. I know so well. I'm just sick of her. If they say and God ain't done with you yet. Open, so sick to leave me alone. I know that's not going to happen. But, you know, whatever. You know, right. I'm, <laughs> you I'm keep here. I'm bringing it because I'm going to keep <laughs> fighting. <laughs> that's just how that's going to go. You going to bring it? I'm going to fight. And we just going to do it. Let's do it. Is it, is it genetic? Um, yes, it is. Now, my daughter has small traits of it. Not a lot. My sister has small traits of it. Not a lot. Now, if I had married someone who had it, the likelihood of my daughter having a higher mutation of it would be higher. But because I didn't marry someone that had it or didn't have a child with someone that had it, then the mutation gene was lower. Wow. Now, does it get worse over time? In your case, uh, has your, it does? It uh, does. Um, I was told that there's a possibility that I could be deaf. I could go completely deaf. That's why I'm very fluent in sign language. Um, there's a possibility I can go completely blind. Okay. And so uh, with that, with that, you know, I take it as it comes. And I have, with, with my vision, I tell people all the time, I was like, you know, I might lose my sight, but I'll never lose my vision. I know that. Y'all hear that? Because I, I lose my sight, but I'll never lose my vision. Very deep. Very deep. And I like that. And I think that to stay positive like that, knowing that, because you're already prepared, I already know what the, the the disability I have is and what it could do. And so I'm already preparing myself. And speaking of preparing, you already know sign language because one of the uh, things that could happen in the future is going deaf. So I like how you're preparing yourself, but still will continue to thrive no matter what happens. That's what's up. That's what I'm talking about. Now, growing up, I can assume that there may have been bullying at school. Oh, honey, I got everything. <laughs> I, look, I got story for days. Um, I remember I was in the ninth grade. Mm -hmm. 
and this is one of my signature stories I tell when I go to speak, because I'm a speaker as well. So when I go to speak, this is one of the stories I tell. I was in a ninth grade English class, you know, just sitting in my, my business, not really, you know, doing anything, just sitting there. And I had a young lady. Now, previously, the day before this, it was a young lady was sitting in front of me, and it was a gentleman across from her. And they turned around, they were just asking me various questions about my disability or whatnot. And I was, what, 15, 16 years old? So it was like, whatever, you know, this is just, this is what it is. Now, was I as confident as I am in it now? No, I wasn't. Right. But I asked for enough about myself and my disability to be able to explain. Right. So we're, now we're over to the next step. And she, the, little, the young lady that's just in front of me, I'm not sit directly in front of me. I'm sorry. She turns around and she looks at me and she says, "My brace is there." <laughs> she said, no, no. When, she, when I tell you what she said, you will know why I said brace yeah. She says, "I don't mean no harm." Mm. Tip number one, ladies and gentlemen, if somebody ever tell ever started putting off with, "I don't mean no harm," they. Thirty-nine point nine nine percent of the time, they go um, follow behind that. I just oh, yeah. that. Okay, but she says I mean no harm. But if I had a child that looked like you, I would throw it in the trash can. And, wow. Okay. At first, it kind of hit me like a ton of bricks. I'm pretty sure. And so my first instinct was to look around to see who she was talking to. <laughs> no, I'm gonna tell you why. Because okay. first of all, I'm like, who says that? Like, who right, 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 right. Creating you, <laughs> like, what? Is, what is your problem? And secondly, in my family. They treated, they never treated me like I had a disability. Like my family never treated me. I was all like my nickname in my family is Trey. They don't call me Little Trey. They call me Trey. Mm -hmm. And it's, I've always been Trey. Right. Oh, that's just Trey. You know, they never treated me any different. They never coddled me. They never called me with kitten gloves. They never, my, like, my, my biological family, they never did any of that. Good. So, when I went out to public was the only place where I was actually faced with the whole disability thing. So I think that day was when it really hit me that I was different. Right. So let me ask you this, because that day you realize now, the fact that your family did not treat you different and they treated you just like everybody else, because that is the that is what you are. I mean, right. we all look different. We can, you know, talk about that for days. We all look different. Um, but going, being prepared as far as the family treating you like there's nothing wrong, and then going and having that experience, did it tear you down, or do you feel like you were prepared because they had already instilled love and confidence in you that nothing's wrong with you? Right. Well. I'm not going to say it tore me down, okay. but it did gut punch me. I'm not going to say a lie. I can understand that. Because it did hurt. Like, of course. To be said, to have something said to you. And I will say this it did change how I looked at myself. It changed a lot of about <laughs> I mean, it is so funny how one instant, one lapse of time, mm. it's let it to change your whole trajectory of yourself. Yeah, yeah. I started looking at myself so differently. I started looking at who I was differently. I started not liking who I was. I started not liking, you know, the things about myself that I used to like, I didn't like anymore. Right. Um. I started becoming ashamed of myself all because I allowed that one comment to change the trajectory of my life. Mm-hmm. And then, but then as I got older, I learned to shift it and use it in a positive way and use it as a force to push me and drive me. And so whenever I'm down or wherever I'm 
And okay, I can't do this no more. I go back to that little girl in ninth grade. And I go back to what she said. That's what and I, that's my gas. That's what's up. And I put that gas in my car. <laughs> and I, up, I dust myself off. I said, okay, what are we doing? There you go. There you go. I love it. So you took that and used that as your motivation. And to yeah. the day, you still, like you said, use that as your fuel. Yeah. That's what's I, up. And I, I, think, I think that that's a very important, there is a very important lesson in that for parents, y'all. Because, you know, we, we got to do better as parents with raising our children. And there's a proper way to do things if we do notice one of our classmates or friends looks a little different than us. You know, there's a proper way to talk about things and, and treat other people. We got to do a better job because it starts with us as parents at home. And then when we release our kids into the world, they're going to do the right thing. Right. And right. Guess what? Even if they don't do, even if they don't, I'm sorry, even if the people around them, I do apologize, are doing the wrong thing, your child will be the one that'll stand outside of the crowd and say, no, I'm okay. not doing this. This is not cool. Right, right. We need more of that. Right. And, you know, it's funny you say that because um, about two months ago, I did a video on TikTok and it was a montage of pictures of me, you know, everyday pictures of me or whatever. And I did it under some music. And now most of my TikTok videos tend to be pretty, you know, I, I tend to do pretty good on TikTok. But this particular video, I got a lot of um, interesting, if we will, comments. Right. And so I just like, oh, so this is how y'all really feel. Okay. All right. I'm cool with it. So and it didn't bother me. It, 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 it didn't bother me. So the following day, I went back and I did a... Uh, um, not a rebuttal, but I did a, a video just saying, you know, I'm good. You know, y'all can say what y'all want to say about me. I'm, yeah. I've looked this way for the last 40 years. I'm going to continue to look this way. Okay, exactly. I, this is me. So I'm good over here. But, karma, <laughs> there are people that have disabilities that are not as strong as I am. So you have to be careful of what Sex. Yeah. There yeah. are some that are working on getting to where I am. I haven't always been here. Honey, look, let me tell you, there have been some days. I get but, it. I get it. But um, there are some that haven't quite gotten here yet. And because someone doesn't look the way you think they should look, or because the way they don't behave the way you think that they should behave, that doesn't give you the right. That's to true. do that, that doesn't, that, doesn't, that doesn't give you the right to to bash them. That, that's not that's cool. Yeah, it's so yeah. big. Yeah, but it is. I said, "What if that was your sister or your brother?" Yep. I said, "Or oh, let's take it a step further. Let's say it was you." Yeah, because it can happen. It can happen. It can happen. My husband tells me all the time. We're all one and after the away from being disabled. I'm telling you. So I, I heard you slipping there. And I think I heard you say it earlier. So you um you have a daughter and you're married. Yeah. How was how was um how was it with really say what? <laughs> this is my second time being married. I, I got divorced about two, three years ago. So I see there's no problem in that area, apparently. Oh, uh, no, 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 there's no problem over there. There's no problem over there. If my husband was here, he would tell you that. Okay. <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> this is my wife and this is my woman and I'm proud to say it. Uh, look, I wish this man would come through the door right now because he, okay. he don't play about his wife now. I know that's right. But guess what? He we, might look. I tell you, he, my husband has um, cerebral palsy, so he's in a wheelchair. Okay, okay. And he, I, I adore him. That's what's up. And will tell you, he don't play about his wife now. I he love it. I love it. Home. And he'll tell anybody, look, do what you want. That right there is mine. 
I know that's right. And we need more men like that that do protect them. Right. You right. know? Honey. <laughs> Your man rides about a wheelchair? <laughs> you want to hear from I that? About a wheelchair? Look, he'd be the second coming of Lazarus. <laughs> so you got you a winner this time. Okay, I did. I did. I'm I glad. Did. I'm glad. And so now let me, so going back to like those times that you, when you actually started to question your, was it you questioning your existence when the young lady made that statement or just the fact of your appearance? Oh, my existence. Okay. I, I didn't understand. Right. I, right. I got like this. I remember I was like six years old. Yeah, I was trying to question my existence. I mean, at that time, I was in foster care. Okay. And I was going through a lot of other different things. Okay. And I just didn't understand why God allowed me to go through all of that. Right. I always question him. That's why. Buddy, stop. He's coming back. And everybody, please excuse my dog whining in the background. There's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with him. No dogs are being hurt during this taping. Okay. <laughs> Come here. That car broke the door off. Here. Huh? Oh, okay. Come here. This is my daughter, Olivia. Hello, Olivia. Hi, pretty Olivia. You're pretty. How you doing? Good. Thank you. You're very welcome. How old are you? 16, about to be 17. Oh, you're not no baby. You're a big girl, man. You, like, <laughs> <laughs> you look, you and your mother look <laughs> like my baby. I know that you always. I listen. You know that you love. Look at that. She holding on. To you. <laughs> listen. I'm telling. Look. I don't play that though. You'll be my baby. My babies are my babies forever. I'm gonna kiss all over you and hug all over you to that. that day. I know the day. Till I leave this earth. I don't believe in that. Don't stop. Uh uh. We gonna give up because I believe you know in giving love. Don't stop, man. You don't ever stop doing that stuff. You know. Let's go check the baby. All right. I want to see my husband. Oh, yeah, no, I want to meet him. Let's meet this awesome man. <laughs> this awesome woman. <laughs> That's your boot? Yeah. Okay. Love you. Love you. Bye. It's nice Thank to meet you. you. Come, come. Of course, you're going to come down. I didn't talk to you about how to introduce you. Oh yeah, I, I didn't hear so many good things, and I heard that you don't play. <laughs> yes, this is the famous. Come on, over, over, over. I know that's right. How we doing? This is the famous DJ Smooth. How, how you doing, man? Hey, Miss Smooth, how you oh, doing? I'm... Come up, some. I can't see you. Oh, Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Hey. You see him now? I can see it a little bit, just the side of his head. There you go. There you go. Oh, yeah. Hey. Is he now? How you yeah. doing? Easy. Let me know. Yeah, I think you're good. Good, 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 good. Nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you too, man. I, I, I love what your wife is doing. I'm pretty sure you're doing the same thing, y'all, the team. Oh, she, she's, oh a, I didn't do that. she's a dynamic woman. I see, and she all yours, man. She told me you don't play. She love you the same. I tell her the, I tell her the same thing. <laughs> I, I love it. I tell people, man, my wife don't play no games, man. <laughs> that works. Yeah. That's both of y'all. Cause yeah. <laughs> I tell them, uh, I try to be on up and up. I don't need them kind of problem, man. Yeah, I know that's right. <laughs> <laughs> the best DJ in the world. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, DJ. DJ. So that's the DJ Smooth. So if I, I'm gonna go look him up. Yeah, DJ Smooth Entertainment. Mm, DJ Smooth Entertainment. That's my company. We about to celebrate. We about to celebrate 20 years in business. In about two, it's gonna be 20 years. So yeah. Man. Look me up on uh, DJ Smooth Entertainment. Okay. It's, it's DJ Smooth 1102 on TikTok. So I'm everywhere. I'm going to definitely make sure I do it. I'm going to definitely, and I'm going to make sure I follow you too. 
Huh? And I keep, gotta keep up with my wife, you know. I know that's right, man. You gotta keep bringing them dollars in and keep <laughs> keep <it good. laughs> uh, I tell her, I tell her all the time, she my Adrian. She always motivate me to do something. That's right. I know that's right. <laughs> that's what Adrian did too. You might <laughs> <laughs> I do my best. I do my best. <laughs> Y'all, it's a team. It's a team effort. Always, always. I know. We've been married for about a year and a half now. Oh, that's what's up, man. Y'all, please stay together and keep communicating. Oh, oh, we, no, don't, we, oh we, don't stay, we don't stay together. <laughs> I love it. I hope yeah, so. We're yeah. going to. Don't that's wreck it. <laughs> only the two people that only the two people in it can make it happen and y'all already said we going to there's no if and no buts about it that's oh, right oh, that's oh, right that's oh, right i like it i like it that's after going through all of that stuff and finally finding yourself and being almost like resurrected to this new ball of power when did you turn into <laughs> latria the disability empowerment coach when i figured out why I had a disability. It was it was one of those situations where I was, I guess I was in my late 20s, early 30s. Mm. And I was still trying to understand, you know, why all of the things that transpired transpired. And so I, again, I didn't have anywhere else to look but God. Right. So I went back to God. I went back to his word. I went back to what his word said about me. And his word said that I was beautifully, wonderfully made in his image. So what the world had to say about me had nothing to do with what God said about me. The two were not connected at all. So as long as I hold on to what God said about me, the world can say whatever they want to say about me. And that empowered me. That's what empowered me. Because as long as I know I got God on my side, I'm good. That's deep. I'm good. And that empowered me. And I wanted to give that empowerment to other people. I wanted to share that with other people with disabilities. I wanted them to know that your disability doesn't lessen you. It empowers you. It doesn't lessen your purpose. It empowers your purpose. Yeah. Just because you have a disability doesn't mean you don't have a purpose. You were created here for a reason. You have a why. And a lot of times with the people with disabilities that I've encountered, they feel like they're mistakes. They feel like God made a mistake. Right. Um, they feel like they were, you know tossed away mm. they feel they feel so many they have so many different feelings as it relates to their disability and i and i encourage them to understand that god don't make mistakes he created you just the way he wanted you to be he doesn't make any mistakes but he created you this way so that he could get the glory this has nothing to do with man this has nothing to do with what man says right. or how much or whatever the case might be. This is all about him getting the glory from your life and your purpose and you're here for a reason. Now your job at this point is not to focus so much on your disability but to focus on why you are here. And if you can use that disability to change the world. That's so true. Very well said. I mean, very, very well said. Um, of course, you do this, you know. <laughs> I mean, I'm not shocked that it was so well said. And I, I, whoever listens to this, I hope that you all, if you're, you know, disabled and struggling, or even if you aren't disabled, just struggling, it applies, you know, because rise up from that. Find your purpose because we all have a purpose. And you're here because you're meant to be here. Don't ever question your existence. Right. And I right. learned a long time ago, as you have realized along your journey, whoever has a problem with it, that's your problem. I'm going to be me because that's all I can do. Not only am I going to be me, I'm going to love doing it. Okay. okay. <laughs> and I'm going to do a damn good job doing it because I only can be me. That's right. 
You know, so I, I think that that is good. And I'm glad that you rose up and then look back for those that aren't like you to pull them up there and say, hey, you too can come join me. Right, right. And I also work with parents of children that have disabilities as well because my daughter has um, ADHD. Okay. As well as some other things going on. Right. So not only being, not only having the disability myself, but being a parent of a child that has a disability, I understand everything that comes along with that. And a lot of times, parents of children with disabilities don't really have that space right. where they say, you know what, today was not a good day. They're always expected to smile. They're always expected to be happy. They're always expected to say how much they love their children right. and so on and so forth. And I can say that they don't love their children because they do. Right. But there are those days. You're right. You're right. <laughs> where, like any typical child, <laughs> they can work a nerve. Yes, but, they can. Okay. But sometimes parents, with, parents of children with disabilities, they don't feel like they had that space to be open and honest about that sort of thing. Yeah. They don't feel like they had that space to feel like they can be honest about how they're feeling in that moment. Yeah. And then don't know how to deal with those feelings in that moment. Mm -hmm. um, That's we important. all talk about self-care and how to take care of yourself. Because a lot of times, if you are a parent of a child that's severely disabled, you don't have time to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm don't have large, 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 a lot of time right. because you're really feeding time and energy into that child. So I know how to take little pieces, pieces here, pieces there, pieces here, pieces there, and, you know, take what you can. <laughs> Sometimes it's nothing but going and sitting on the toilet. I, it's just, yeah, breathe. just to breathe, <laughs> just to breathe, right, right. Or, or maybe it's getting up before they get up. It's just yeah, have a cup of coffee, but it's you have very to important. little glimpse of pieces of time to right. take with yourself. Because if you don't, you're going to burn yourself out. If you burn yourself out, then you're going to be no good to yourself or the child. Having having the time to care for themselves and um, yeah, because that's that's so important. That's so important. And a lot of parents will put themselves on like on the back burner because you know they care for their children. And that's what a parent does. A parent cares for their child. Mm -hmm. But you have to also have to care for yourself as well. You have to love yourself enough to say, okay, look, I got to take this two, three minute break. Right. Even if it's nothing more than two minutes, I go and I sit on the toilet and I just breathe. Or I go sit outside of the car if I can and turn the radio on. Right. You know, it's, and a lot of times when we think of self-care, we think of it in the sense of it has to be this big lapse of time. Yes. <clears throat> it can't be. It cannot be. I can only spare two minutes here, mm -hmm. two minutes here, right. maybe three minutes here. Take the two minutes. Take the three minutes. Because it's going to be a world of a difference sure. throughout the course of your day when you're trying to get stuff done and you don't take it, you're going to feel it. So when you have it to take it, take it. I do agree with that. I, I completely agree with that, as you said, because at the end of the day, if you're no good for yourself because you're so worn down physically and mentally, you're going to be no good for your children. And uh, with any kids, but children with disabilities in particular, it, right. it, it can be over, more overwhelming <laughs> than with, you know, I, with children. I, I currently work in daycare, mm -hmm. and I have quite. I have uh, about maybe two, two or three kids in my classroom that have some uh, special needs. Mm -hmm. One in particular, when his mom brings him, I can look at her face and tell she has worn her out the whole week. I can just look at her face, and she's just like. Take him. Just take him. I mean, she doesn't say that. Right, right. But yeah. her face. Yeah, yeah. Like, I can't. 
I can't. I can't. So what I've done is, and yeah, here's a handful. I was gonna But there's some other reasons why he's a handful outside of disability too. But right. you know. Um, but I but what I was saying to her, I was like, you know, if you want and I only do this for certain kids, I don't do this for all kids. But if you want, I can come and I can babysit him for you. Mm-hmm. While you go get a cup of coffee or go get some ice cream or just go get your nails done or just something for you to do. Mm-hmm. For you to get there. Because she, I'm like, because she told me, she's like, I'm in the house with both of them. Because she, she has a brother that has cerebral palsy. And then it's him. And they're both about the uh, kind of close together in age, right. and they drive this woman stir crazy. <laughs> wow, I can only imagine. And is she single? Uh, she's married, but her husband travels a lot. Okay, so she is the person yeah. taking ninety uh, percent the caretaker or whatever, right? Right. Oh. So I'll say, you know, I said, um, I'd be willing to babysit. You know, if you want to go to a movie or something, yeah. or or or, or uh, ice cream or something like that, or just go do something for yourself. And she's like, "No, no, I'm okay. I'm okay." I mean, her her she's verbally telling me, she's "Yeah, okay. yeah, exactly." But, but you know that <laughs> she's screaming, "Help!" All on the yeah. inside. Okay. Yeah, like, yeah, thank him, thank him, thank him. I get it. And that, that can be, you know, and a lot of times with stuff like that, I, you know, would implore her, whoever you are, you know, to actually take, take you up on that. If you, if you're comfortable, of course, you know, you, you watch the child. Um, well, I had a little girl that had uh, Asperger's. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was in my classroom. No, she had Asperger's. She had um, uh, autism. She had autism. Smart girl, very, 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 very smart. Mm-hmm. But she had autism. And Monday morning, her mom was just come in and she, like she ready to break out of class because she's had her all week by herself. Right. And then on top of that, she had twin babies. So it was a lot on her. That's brutal. Yes, it was a lot on her. And a lot so, of times parents that go through that can end up hurting some, you know, right? not even that you meant to, you know, you right. literally are not there. Right. And with this particular young lady, I could see how that could happen. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I would say, would you like me to take her with me? Would you like me to come and get her to sit there? Yeah. Would, you like, would you like to bring her to my house? And, you know, she'll come and stay and play. Right. And her mom will go to the grocery store, or her mom will just go right around town, just not have her. <laughs> and then she'll come back, and she'll come back, and she'll be, she'll look so relaxed and so calm. But uh, but yes, yeah. but parents, I implore you, please, if you need a time out, if you need the break, take it. When you can get it, take it. Yeah. Because a world of good, a world, a world, a world of good. I do. Really- that it, those those breathers help, you know, and and again, we we um we need to return back to the village, especially when you have a good, you know, a good village, you know, you know what I mean, parents. We got a good village, but like you just said, take take us up when we're willing to help out, because we all can use somebody in a time of need, and we we parents, mothers in particular, know one another. You can, like you said, you can look on the faces and tell. I know you you need some help. <laughs> hey, I could be in the Walmart. I'd be in the Walmart, mind my business. And I guess this is just God's anointing. He is placed on me. I don't know why, but I guess it just is. So I accept it. I'd be in the Walmart pushing the aisle, pushing the cart down the aisle. And the kids be driving the mama crazy. They screaming and hollering. Yes. And be looking like, Lord, please somebody help me. Please somebody help me. <laughs> And I'll come back like, ma'am, are you okay? And she, you know, she can see the, the tears. The right. tears are well up in her eyes. And I'm like, okay, 
I'm like, well, would you like some help? And she was like, I'm trying to find X, Y, Z, and I can't find it. And she won't stop screaming. Uh-huh. And I don't screaming. And, 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 and she just like, and I don't know. I don't know what else to do. I said, okay. I said, well, do you want me to look for what you're looking for? Or do you want me to figure out why she's screaming? Why you look for what you're looking for? Right. I said, well, why don't you look for what you're looking for? Because you know what you're looking for. Right. And I'll figure out why he's saying. And then most of the time, I could just talk to kids. And why, why are you screaming? Why are you screaming? Right. Because I want X, Y, Z. Okay, but did mommy say you could have X, Y, Z? No. Okay, so you think screaming is going to make her give it to you? Mm-hmm. I don't think so, because she hasn't given it to you yet. But it's going to work. The mic will try a different time. Okay, that one's not working right now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the mic want to try a different time. Exactly. <laughs> now, that's good. That, that's the type of stuff that I know we need, because, like I said, stuff like that can, we never know what a person can be going through or what they, what that in particular, in that particular case, what she could have left out the store and done to that child. You know, that, that child was just screaming to the top of their lungs. She was, or he was trying to find something and they couldn't, we never know. And then they could have went out to the car and did God knows what to that child. So I think that's a good thing that, you know, when we see something, we say something. That's right. I don't exactly. believe in that mind your business stuff. Not when it comes to certain things. I'm here to help. Nope. And if I can help you, I'm going to help you. And yeah, it, that's yep. It. And there's nothing wrong with it. And guess what? I'm going to keep doing it. I'm yep. sorry. You know, that, that that's what I'm here to do. help you, I'm going to help you. Yep. Yep. And I, and I, you keep doing what you're doing, please, because I love what you're doing. And tell everybody, before I let you go, where they can follow you, because y'all, she doing big things out here. She's doing good things, and we need to support our people, and we need to follow her, okay? So tell okay. everybody where they can follow you. Let me see. Where can you find me? I am on Facebook. I have my personal page is Latria Russ, is L-A, T is in Tom, R-E-A, Russ, R-U-S-S. On Instagram, I am Coach Latria 79 and then I also have my... um. My company page called More Than My Disability. So it's more underscore than underscore my underscore disability. Um, on TikTok, I am Coach Latria. And then I have another TikTok, Speaker Latria. Um, I also have a YouTube page that's under construction. Um, I think that's Coach Latria. Okay. Yeah, that's Coach Latria on TikTok. Not not to talk about YouTube. YouTube. Y'all, yeah. we're going to keep, um. so if that YouTube is under construction, just keep checking back. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's videos there. There's videos there. Oh, good, 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 good. I'm adding videos daily. I'm watching under construction because I'm not finished adding videos. Uh-huh. Hey, no problem, y'all. We're going to go support it. We're going to go watch the videos and, uh, you know, support you as much as I can. I'm going to keep following you because I love what you're doing. As long as you keep doing what you're doing, I'm, I'm in your corner. Okay. Can I, um, I have a book. I don't know if I can do this or not. I should have asked if I could do this before I did it. Oh, man, but... I have no problem. I'm all about that. Okay. Hold on one second. I'm good. Okay. So this is the book I was telling you about. Uh-huh. I'm not going to say, I'm sorry. Uh, it's in the conversations with God. This was the book I was telling you about with the book of prayers and stuff yeah. in it. Um, this is my 
my actually my favorite book I've written. I've written seven. Um, this one is on Amazon. Um, That's you your can, book. You wrote that. I wrote it. Yeah. All right, y'all. I have. Please excuse my dog, y'all. I'm so sorry, everybody. <laughs> I have two chihuahuas, and he right oh, you do. Now, he is pissed. I have one. <laughs> <laughs> and he is in the cage. I mean, and right now I'm, on, I'm online, so you know I can't get up and get him, y'all. But no, no animals are being abused, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and then I also have a journal that goes that goes with it. So uh, What's the name of those again? Okay, so this is called uh, "Intimate Conversations with God: okay. uh, Prayers of a New Christian." Okay. And this is just the journal that goes along with it. Okay. On Amazon, right? Oh, uh, well, this one is. Okay. This one is the journal. You can get this from me personally. Okay. You can ask the both personally from me, and I will autograph them and sign them. Okay. Okay. Good, good, good. I'm, I'm going to reach out to you myself. And uh, yeah. everybody. If you reach out to me, you can um, hit me up on social media. You can send me an email, um, Coach Latria at gmail.com as you say you know i saw you on the show i would like to purchase your books and i will give you information on how to purchase them perfect perfect i love it i love it keep writing because i know you got a lot more to say and you say it well so keep on speaking and i got (laughs) i got one last question for you before i let you go for the night no problem Will you promise me to always spread peace and love in this world? Always. I appreciate it. That's right. What'd you say? I know that's why I'm here. I know that's right. Oh, I know that's why you're here. I already know that's one of the reasons you're here. And you ain't going nowhere. Because you got a lot more to say. Got a lot more to say. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. That's right. Well, I do appreciate you so much for joining me. Whoa!